Hey guys, welcome. Uh, this is Mr. Smith, and I'm doing a video. And if you can hear in the background anything, it's probably my son watching Sonic and Tails, I think. Not really sure. All right, here we go. Number one, C is between A and B, so you want to draw a picture. Now, C is between A and B. That doesn't mean it's in the middle, so I'm going to put it over here. And we want to see AC is 3x plus 4. CB is 7x minus 12. And then the whole thing is 6x plus 20. So this is um, basically the segment addition postulate. We see the definition right up there. And so I'm going to do little piece plus little piece equals the whole piece. And that's going to become 10x. 4 and negative 12 is negative 8, 6x plus 20, and then subtract the 6x over, you get 4x, add the 8 over, you get 28, and then divide by 4, you get x equals 7. I did ask for a, b, which I didn't have written here, so I'll write it right there. You just plug it back in, so that's going to be 6 times 7 plus 20, and double check in your calculator um, so you don't make a mistake, but I got 62 as the total length, and that's, like I said, the segment addition postulate. All right, name the angle. Uh, you could do it in two ways. I could name it angle M, uh, or better yet, I can name it by using three sides. M has to be in the middle, so that'd be angle QMN, or I could name it angle NMQ. Again, as long as M's in the middle, we're pretty good to go. Number three, I have two and four, so two and four are vertical angles. So because two and four are vertical angles, I can set them equal to each other. So we can do x plus 21 equals 8x minus 42. Subtract the x, I get 7x. Add 42, I get <clears throat> 63. Divide by 7, x equals 9. And then I want to find angle four, so I'm going to plug it back in. To either one of these, I'm going to plug it back into here, so that's 9 plus 21, which gives me 30. So that means 4 is also 30 because they're vertical. And then uh, angle 1 and 30 are a linear pair, so that should add up to 180. So 130, or 150 plus 30 is 180. And there you go. Speaking of a linear pair, next one is a linear pair. And so we just go ahead and add those two together and set equal to 180 because that's what linear pair means. Good thing for your note card. Note card, note card, what is on my note card? Okay, 4x, 2x is 6x, 12 and 36 is 48 equals 180, and we're gonna subtract 48 from both sides, um, and I'm just double checking, that's 132, divide by, um, divide by six on both sides, and you get 22. Now that's x. All right, four out the door. Number five, complementary definition means add to 90. So we're gonna add C and D and add them up to 90. Okay, so that four x and eight x makes 12 x. Uh, move the 18 by adding it, so that's 108, and then divide by 12, and that goes in to 9, and then find angle C, so that's just going to be 8 times 9 minus 18, and that should give me about 54 degrees. Okay, all right, cool. Number six. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. What we have to know, it says they're opposite rays. So that means we know all of these add to 180. Um, so if we plug in what we do know, which is angle 43 is 43 degrees. Then we have angle 1 is 71 degrees. And then angle 3 is 2x plus 19. It does say that MT bisects this angle, so that means that this angle and this angle should be congruent because they get bisected. So that means this is also 2x plus 19. So we are going to combine like terms and 
um, sorry, not combine like terms, so we're going to add all four of these angles and set it equal to 180, since we know the whole thing is equal to 180. So we get 71 plus 43 plus 2x plus 19 plus another 2x plus 19, because those are congruent, and all that should equal to 180. So if you combine like terms, so 71 plus 43 plus 19 plus another 19 is 152. The two x's add together to give me 4x. I'm going to subtract the 180, or the 152 from 180, and I get 28. And then x goes into that seven times. Angle of three, we plug it back in. Two times seven plus 19. Two times seven is 14. 14 plus 19 is going to give me 33 degrees. Okay? All right, chapter two. So all the properties, I'm just going to go over them. Um, there's a bunch of them. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, we have x plus 8 equals 12y, and 12y equals x plus 8. That is symmetric property. Not to be confused with reflexive. Reflexive, they have to be the same. Symmetric is when we just flip-flop the sides. a plus c equals 20, c equals 30, a equals 30 plus 20. So basically... We substituted the value of 30 in for C, so that's substitution. Okay, AB equals AB, that's reflexive property. You look in the mirror, you see yourself. Uh, X equals Y plus 1, Y plus 1 equals Z, X equals Z. So basically I'm using the Y plus 1 to connect X and Z, right? If, if X is equal to green and Z is equal to green, X must equal, equal Z. So that's transitive property. Over here, we have 3x plus 8 equals 20. Over here, we have 3x equals 12. Looks like we subtracted 8 on both sides, which would mean subtraction property um, of equality. And we say equality because it happens to both sides. That's why it's very different than uh, another term we can have. Oops, sorry. I'm going to quit sucking the cord. All right, PQ equals 16, 2PQ equals 32. It looks like I multiplied both sides by 2. So that's multiplication property. Of, again, equality, because it's happening to both sides. Okay. Um, that was 12. And let's see. Where did I put the other paper? Ah, got lost. There we go. 13, there it is. So R is the midpoint of TS. So TR equals RS. That's going to be um, definition of midpoint. And AB equals CD. CD equals, that's symmetric again. So doubling up on that one. And then B is between A and C. AB equals, that's like our first problem we had, that segment addition postulate. There's also angle addition postulate, very similar. Just does it with angles. All right, <clears throat> now we get to these ones. These ones are a little bit more time consuming. So write an equation line that passes through the two points. So um, x1, y1, x2, y2. So you have to use slope formula. So slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so we plug that in, we get uh, 13 minus 5. And I get negative 10 minus and negative 8. Notice there's two negatives there, one's from the equation and then one's from the actual number itself. And so we have five, the 13 minus 5, which is going to give me 8, and that becomes positive, so that's negative 2. So this should give me a slope of negative 4. So with a slope and a point, I could put it into point-slope form, which I guess I'll write up here. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So y minus y1, which is 5, equals the slope, negative 4, x minus x1, which is negative 8. And the screen went dark. Okay. So we add those together. I'm going to distribute. So two negatives make it a positive. So we end up with negative 4x, and then 4 times 8, uh, or negative 4, I apologize, times uh, positive 8 is negative 32. And then we add the 5 over, and we get negative 4x minus 27. 
and that's in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, which is convenient because I can get the m and the y intercept pretty easily. Find the slope of a line perpendicular. So remember, perpendicular has opposite reciprocal slope. Um, so I'm going to just find the slope using the slope formula. I'm going to do the opposite reciprocal. So it should be negative 3 minus negative 5 and 8 minus 12. Two negatives make a positive, so that's 2, and that's negative 4. So that should be negative 1 half, which means my opposite reciprocal slope, right? So I need to do the opposite reciprocal slope of this guy. So it's going to become ba -ba -ba -boom, 2 over 1, or just 2. All right, find the slope of the line parallel. Parallel has the same slope. So we just have to find this slope, and we're pretty much done. So we get negative 5 minus 5, and negative 7 minus a negative 2. That becomes negative 10 over negative 5, which becomes 2, which is just my slope, 2. It's the exact same. So here we did the same slope of what we had. And that ends up being just 2. All right, write the equation of a line that is parallel to it and passes through. So I first have to get the slope of this. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. We get 3y equals negative 2x plus 9 divide by 3. I'm going to stop there because that's my slope right there. I don't really care about the y-intercept. I just want my slope. So there it is. There's my slope. So I'm just going to go ahead and <clears throat> use that slope and my coordinate points and plug into slope intercept form. So that's going to be uh, y minus 1 equals negative 2 over 3 x minus 3. Distribute that, we get negative 2 thirds x. The 3's cancel, and negative times a negative makes it a positive 2. Add the 1 over. So again, if you had trouble right here on that step, you can use a calculator. So watch, I go negative 2 divided by 3. You can literally just hit enter and you kind of get it in there. And then do times by a negative 3. And that's how I got my value of 2, if it's kind of hard to see. But there it is. A little easier to see like that. Okay. Uh, add 1 to both sides and we get negative 2 thirds x plus 3. Then we draw a picture for this one. Uh, D is parallel or perpendicular to F. Sorry, D is perpendicular to E. F is also perpendicular to E. What must be true? Well, then D and F must be parallel. And it's actually by the converse of corresponding angles. These are corresponding angles that are congruent. And if you have congruent corresponding angles, then we have parallel lines. All right, let's see if I am lost. Not yet. 21. All right. So a lot I could talk about here, but basically for the sake of our sanity, um, I'm going to do all the corresponding angles right now. So 126 is corresponding to 2, so that's congruent. 2 and 6 are corresponding, and 6 and 10 are corresponding. Remember, corresponding means you're in the same relative location, okay, um, <clears throat> to one another in that table. So this is top right, top right, top right, top right of their respective tables. Okay. If, once I have 126 here, I can take care of all the verticals. So 4 is vertical, 8 is vertical, and 12 is vertical. And then from there, I can take care of all the linear pairs, which the rest of these are all linear pairs, so they're going to be all 54. So basically, everything's either 126 or 54. I'm not going to fill it in there, but there you go. That's what they should look like. Number 22, what kind of angles are these? Well, we just talked about it. If we were sitting at a table... They're both in the top right of their table. This is corresponding. If it's told me that these are parallel, I can set these equal to each other, and I can solve. The lights go out in the city. Sorry, my lights keep going out. All right, um, let's solve. Subtract the 2x, that gives me x. Subtract the 2, I get x equals 40. And the relationship is corresponding angles, okay? Corresponding angles. And if you don't know what CA means, make sure you write it all the way out. 
These are alternate exterior angles. They're alternating on either side of the transversal and they're on the exterior. This is all called the interior, which makes everything else the exterior. But alternate exterior angles are congruent, so we end up setting them equal to each other anyways. So I subtract the 8x to get 2x. I add 34 to get 36. Divide by 2, x equals 18. All right, 24. Are we halfway through? By the way, this is my dining room table. Well, isn't it nice? You can see crumbs in here from dinners and this little nick. That was, I bought it with the nick. Isn't that nice? So nice. Okay. 24. This one's a little, this one's a little challenging. Um, maybe halfway through the video, I'll give you like a tour of the house, you know? Um, so this one should continue all the way. When we're talking about lines um, and parallels, we want to look only at one transverse a lot of time. So I'm only going to look at this guy. I'm going to pretend that other line doesn't exist. And the reason why I want to do that is because I really want to focus on these angles right here. 3x and then the combination of 22 and 80, which is 102. Those are alternate interior angles, which means I can set them equal to each other. But 22 and 80 on their own, I really couldn't have done anything with. So I'm going to get 3x equals 102. And then 102 divided by 3 is going to give me my x value of 34. Okay, 1 and 7. So we're looking for the converse, right? If I can prove the angles are congruent or add to 180, depending upon the angle, then I can show that they are congruent um, or parallel, sorry. So 1 and 7. If 1 and 7 are congruent, those are alternate exterior. So if alternate exterior are congruent, then my lines are parallel. 1 and 7 are on line L, which means they're cutting A and B. So A must be parallel to B by the converse of alternate um, exterior angles. Sorry, I almost put interior. 9 and 11 are vertical. Vertical does nothing for me, so I just write none. doesn't prove anything. And 8 and 9... Uh, if I look here, 8 and 9 are same side interior. And if same side add to 180, we have parallel lines. They're both on B, so that means it's cutting L and M. And that's converse of same side interior. And we finish chapter 2. Chapter 3, explain differences. All right, cool. Quick, isosceles, two congruent sides, two congruent base angles, and we have what's called a vertex angle. Equilateral. All sides are congruent and all angles are 60 degrees. And scaling usually remarked like this, meaning all sides are different. What type of triangle has a hypotenuse? Okay, well, the triangle that has a hypotenuse is a right triangle. It's the only triangle with a hypotenuse, and it's always opposite the 90. So the hypotenuse is right there in green. And we typically call the other parts the legs. And that's the hypotenuse, always across from the 90. What type of triangle has a vertex angle? That would be an isosceles. That's a right triangle, I didn't say. What does CPCTC stand for when we use an approve? We prove it, use it after we prove triangles congruent. We say corresponding parts and congruent triangles are congruent. So I'm not going to write that out, that's a lot, but it's Corresponding parts in congruent triangles are congruent. And we use it when we want to prove a piece of one triangle is congruent to another piece of another triangle that's already congruent. Number 32, we have um, an isosceles. So that means base angles are congruent. So that makes this also 3y. So to solve for the x's, I just set those two equal to each other. I don't even care about that one. I don't know the perimeter, so I would not add them all up. Um, sorry, I just set them equal to each other. So that's 7x minus 2. Subtract that, I get 4x. Add the 2 over, I get 16. And divide by 4, I get x equals 4. And then to solve for y, I have all three angles. I know all three add up to 180. And again, that was 3y because these are base angles that are congruent. I knew that because I had two congruent sides. And so I add them all up, set it equal to 180. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8y. And we do 180 divided by 8, which gives me a decimal of 22.5 for y. Okay, number 33. We have AED is 2x and AEG is 5x minus 2. Well, those are linear pairs, so we just add them 
and set it equal to 180. So that's 7x minus 2 um, equals 180. It's not supposed to be like that, sorry. Uh, add the 2, 7x equals 182. 182 divided by 7 is 26. And 34, we have congruent base angles. It's isosceles, so these are congruent. So we just set them equal to each other. So subtract the 2x, add the 18 at the same time, so we get 18 equals x. All right, we're three pages in, and I got three pages to go. Let's see if I can finish this up before my son wakes up. By the way, check this out. Look at, I'm watching my son on the monitor. This is 4B, sleeping. You know, let's see if we can spy on my son real quick. Let's see, this is going to be tough. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. All right, I'm going to get seasick. All right, let's see. This is my house. There's my son. Do you see him? Theo, look at me. Wave hi. Okay. Back to math. That was sick. Okay. It's going to be a long video. All right. Number 35. Okay, so we have all the sides, but I don't have the perimeters. I can't add them all up. But I do have these two congruent base angles, which means if these two are congruent, that means these are also congruent. So this is an isosceles. So again, you can prove an isosceles by its two congruent sides or its two congruent base angles. So since those are congruent, we're going to set those two equal to each other. I subtract the 2x to get 3x. I'm going to add the 8 to get 18. I'm going to divide by 3x equals 6. It's a right triangle. I know all three angles add up to 180. So really, this is 90. That means these two should add up to 90. So I'm just going to do x plus 19 plus 2x. And it went dark again. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Plus 11 equals 90. And so I'm going to combine like terms to get 3x plus, I believe that's 30, equals 90. Subtract that, we get 60, x equals 20. If ABC equals FGH, then what is GFH? So we just kind of go off of, okay, so G should match up with B. Um, H should match up with C. And then the only one left is F and A. Woohoo, BCA. All right. Are these triangles congruent? I feel like kids struggle with these. All right. First of all, let's mark what they gave me. AB is congruent to CD. All right. Now it says AB is parallel. That does not mean congruency. That does mean I have some congruent angles somewhere. And I see alternate interior angles right there. I can't go alternate interior angles on the other side because it didn't tell me if AD and BC are parallel. I can only go off the lines that are parallel. So notice these lines are parallel. So that's the only one I can make the angle off of. I can't do the angle off of the other side because I don't know BC and AD are parallel. And then I have a shared side. So if I look at this, I see side angle side. It's an included angle. So this is going to be SAS. So that is true. And A right here is going to match up with C. B is actually going to match up with D, and D is going to match up with B. C, D, B. All right, R, C, bisects H, R, T. So we know these are congruent. We know that H and T are congruent, and I know I have a shared side. So this looks like side angle angle, or angle angle side is what we typically say. So that is true. And then R should match up with R because they're both at the same angle. T matches up with H, and C is going to match up with C. Okay. Translations and reflections. Okay. So translate the point 1, negative 3, 2 units to the right. Okay. We can do this. Not too bad. Um, so to the right means plus to the x, and two units up means plus to the y. Um, so we're just basically going to go 1 plus 2, and negative 3 plus 6. And so that's going to give me 3 comma 3. Rotate the point negative, uh, sorry, 180 degrees. Now I remember the rule, 
So rotate 180 is negative x, negative y, and Um, so we just change the sign. So this just becomes negative 3, positive 1. I would just quickly graph this. 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 1 is right here. I want to be two coordinates away. So negative 3, 1 is over here. And that looks like I did go 180. So, and again, it doesn't say which way I'm going, so it doesn't really matter. But I did do two coordinates away, which is what I want. Every time I do a 90, it's a coordinate away. Okay, um, let's keep going, let's keep going. Uh, here we're going counterclockwise. Now counterclockwise is actually a positive rotation, if you recall, uh, because of the way my, my system works. So if I'm at negative two, positive one, two, three, four, counterclockwise means I'm gonna wanna be down here somewhere in that range. And so for me, I want to go um, <clears throat> let's see so counterclockwise I think is negative y comma x let's see if that works so you're gonna flip the location of them so I'm gonna flip their location first of all and then I change the sign of the front one so let's see if that works negative one two three four and then negative one two Okay, I'm in the right qu quadrant, so that looks good enough to me. Uh, negative a, negative 7 is reflected over the y. I don't usually remember the, the values of these, so I just go ahead and plot them. So I'm at positive 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm reflecting over the y, so what's the coordinate of a? So I'm reflecting over this guy. I'm two units away from it, so I'm just going to go two units behind it. So that's my new point. I'm going to put like a little dot on each of my new points. Um, those are like saying like prime or whatever. Um, so that should just be negative 2, negative 7. Let's hit that one. Uh, reflect over the x-axis. Okay, so I'm at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive 1, 2, 3, 4. So this time I'm reflecting over this guy. I'm 4 units away, so I should go 4 units down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there should be my new point, and we're going to call that negative 5, negative 4. Reflect over the y equals x line. This would be a good one to remember, but the y equals x line, basically, you just kind of flip your values to just be yx. Um, so we get, I should get negative 2, 3. Um, but let's graph it. We got 1, 2, 3, and negative 2, and then negative 2, and 1, 2, 3. And if you see... The y equals x line is the line that goes right through there. It's a 1 over 1 slope, and that looks like it's reflected. This is going to be a negative y, negative x rotation, so I'm going to flip them and change the sign. So I'm going to get 4, 2. Again, let's check it. Negative 2, negative 4, and then 4, 2. And this is being reflected over the y equals negative x line, and that looks pretty right on. Okay, we only got two pages left, or less. We're chilling. One video? Nice. All right, cross multiply. Boom, boom. Um, so I'm going to get 9 times 52 equals x minus 4 times 39. I could have simplified that, potentially. I bet you I could have. I didn't, though, so big numbers for us all. This is going to be 39x, and 39 times 4 is negative 156. I'm going to add the 156 over to 468 to get 624 equals 39x, and then divide by 39, and I get x equals 16. So a nice little proportion. Remember to distribute. Don't forget that. Are the polygons similar? Okay, well... Um, those are the ways to prove similarity. So it looks like I could use SAS. I want to match up the small with the small. So 1.6 is the small, 3.2 is the small, and then the big with the big. And I'm going to go um, left to right. So I'm going to go 3.2 over 1.6 equals 4.1 over 2.5. I'm going to simplify those in my calculator, or you could cross multiply. 
Um, but if I simplify that, I get two over here. I kind of have a feeling this isn't gonna work out. I end up with 41 over 25. Those are not, so not similar, sorry. Didn't work, we were close, but sorry, nope. Okay, for this one, I wanna compare what is the same. So I have 30, 20 to 15, those can compare. And I have X, which is this whole thing. So I want to compare it to the whole thing. So which I don't have that number, but I can find it pretty easily. All I have to do is just do 6 plus 15, which gives me 21. So I'm going to go uh, bottom to top. Bottom to top. And cross multiply, we get 15X equals, um, I think that's 420. Yes. And then divide by 15. Yes, x equals 28. And there we go. And if I wanted, I could find this piece is 8, right? Because 8 plus 20 is 28. Um, given that these are similar, so let's match up everything correctly. A, B, which is the first two letters, matches up with E, D, which is the first two letters. Um, A, C, which is the front and back letters. And E, F. And then we have that final piece, so... I'm going to go left to right on all these, so I get 15 over x equals, and I'm going to pick 9 over 3. Cross multiply gives me 9x and 45, I believe, if I'm mistaken, and divide that by 9, x equals 5. And then let's go with the y. We get y over 4 equals 9 over 3. Cross multiply, we get 3y equals 36, and then 3 goes into that 12 times. Looks good to me. Three possibilities that prove two triangles are similar, they're literally at the top. I don't even know why I asked you this question, but pretty sick. Pretty sick right there. Okay. Are these similar? All right, so we do have an angle. That's good. I want to match small with small, so I'm going to go 12 is a small, that's going to match with 16. So I'm going to do 12 over 16, and then I'm going to do 15 over, uh, not, not 30, but 20. So 12 divided by 16, which is 3 over 4, and 15 over 20, which is 3 over 4. So we do have two proportional sides, so I'm going to say by SAS. I don't have any numbers here, so I can't prove anything as far as, um, you know, which triangles, how, how the triangle congruency statement works. These have two congruent angles, so this is just angle-angle similarity. <clears throat> I'm guessing it's side-side-side, side, but we're going to have to actually check all of them. Small to small, medium to medium, and the unmarked one is large to large, so I'm going to go left to right, so 4 over 6. 10 over 15, and 14 over 21. And I think my son's waking up, so let's see if I can power through this, or I might have to pause and bring my son in. We'll see. Or we might want to say hi. They're all 2 over 3, so this is going to be side, side, side similarity. How convenient. We got them all. 55, a lot of kids have problems on this. If you're having trouble, draw the two triangles separate, right? Not a bad idea. This is 6 and 10. Um, this is 30 and 21. Now, I know we're kind of looking for a specific thing, but let's just call this uh, my unknown of x and this my unknown of y. And let's see if we can set this up. So we kind of see that uh, these sides are the corresponding pieces. And I'm going to use the 10 and the 30 and then the other color I didn't mark correspond. So I'm going to go 6 to x equals 10 to 30, which is really 1 to 3. So I'm going to do 6 times 3, which is 18 equals x. So x is this whole thing, by the way. That's what we're referring to as x. So that's 18. Um, which means if I want bc, I just subtract 6 from it and I get 12 as my answer, which again doesn't look right, but it is right. For y, we're going to get y over 21 equals, again, it should be 10 over 30, but I could do 1 over 3. We cross multiply, we get 3y equals 21, and then divide by 3, y equals 7. 
So this is 7, and that's actually AB, so I'm happy with that. Factor, all right, are we into factoring? We're cruising. I, he's not even awake. We're chilling. What multiplies the 12 adds to 7? I'm going with the 4 and 3. Done. So x plus 4, x my, uh, plus 3. They're both positive. It just says factor. We're done. Oh my gosh, we're chilling. We got this. All right, super factor mode. Negative 9, negative 8. I'm right in the crack. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, I'm going with negative 9, positive 1, so that's x minus 9, x plus 1. Next one, negative 30 and 1, so they have to be different signs. I'm going to go with negative 5, positive 6. Again, you just have to be practicing and trying different factors of the numbers until you get something that works. Here I should factor a 5 out before anything. Um, that's 5, and that's 6, and then we factor using the 6 and negative 5. They're both going to be, have to be negative to get me to that, so I'm going to think negative 2, negative 3. So it's x minus 2, x minus 3, but I don't, have, I can't forget there is a 5 in front uh, that I uh, GCF'd out. Number 60 again, I'm going to GCF out the 2, and then I can factor this. I'm thinking... Uh, 10 and 2, negative 10, positive 2. I think that will work. And don't forget I factored a 2 out in the beginning. Now this next one I can't factor a 2 out of, so I'm going to have to split the middle term. So I'm going to do 2 times 18, which is 36, and negative 15. Um, so I'm thinking maybe they're both negative, potentially. Um, and this is where, like... Again, I'm not always perfect, so I'm going to just do 36 divided by 12 and 3. There it is. Okay. I had a feeling. I just had to double check. So 12 divided by 3 is 36. So we're chilling there. And we get, uh, so what did I say? Negative 12, negative 3. So we break this down. Negative 12x, negative 3x, plus 18, and 2x squared. And then we basically find my... Um, GC after these, which is 2x, that's giving me x minus 6, and I should be able to pull out the same thing here, so I'm going to pull out a negative 3, that gives me x minus 6. Those look the same, so my answer is 2x minus 3, and x minus 6. And we can just double check real quick, is 2x times x, 2x squared, yep. Is negative 3 times negative 6, positive 18, yeah, so at least those two front numbers will work, and usually that means you're probably right. Alright, guess what? As if that wasn't enough, we got to do it again. So, let's go. Um, 12 times negative 2, that is going to be negative 24 and 5. So, one's negative, one's probably positive in this case. So we got 12, no, 6 and 4, no, 24, maybe uh, divided by 8, Does that work? No, that's 8 and 3, which makes 5. Yes, that does. Okay. 8 and 3. There we go. So we get 12x squared minus 3x plus 8x minus 2. And factor by grouping. I know it gets a little small. I should maybe zoom in a little bit. Okay, so I, I can factor out a 3x, which gives me 4x minus 1. And here I can factor out a 2, which gives me 4x minus 1. Again, those look the same, which is good. And that means my answer has the 4x minus 1. And the leftover is a 3x plus 2. All right, next one. Last of these that are a little longer. 9 times 4 is 36 and negative 12. Oh, gosh, that's so similar to our last one. Um, I'm thinking, I don't know, let's see, 36, oh, negative 6, and negative 6, that would probably work, right, yeah, okay, so 9x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 4, again, split that middle term of negative 12x and negative 6 and negative 6, we pull out, I think, a 3x, so that's 3x minus 2, pull out a negative 2, 
gives me 3x minus 2. So 3x minus 2, saw that twice, and then the leftovers are 3x minus 2. Ooh, perfect square. Trinomial. Okay. Uh, these are difference of perfect squares. The best thing is to square root these and get x and 2, and then just give it the opposite one. Um, so that's x plus 2 and x minus 2. Same thing here. These are perfect squares. So square root of 9 is 3x, and this is 5. So do the plus and do the minus. Whew. Okay, I'm done. I don't know how long that video was. If you stayed with me that whole time, hats off to you. I'm impressed. Let's see. Oh, dude, my son was napping that whole time. Can you even see him? I don't know. Can you see him? Let's see. Where's the angle? There he is. Having a good nap. Okay. Well, team, good job. My battery's running low. Have a good one.